What's up everyone, my name is Alex, I'm one of the co-founders of MyInvestingClub.com and I want to let you guys know about something special we're doing for our viewers on YouTube. So the most common question we get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did is we created a free two-hour mentorship course for the brand new trader. It's going to be available at MyInvestingClub.co, the link is going to be right here. This is a free webinar that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they start. I also wanna let you guys know about something that's very unique to MIC. So if you have any questions about trading or you're curious about trading or you don't know if MIC is the right fit for you, now you can text our head mentor, Tosh, whose number is gonna be right here, and he'll answer all the questions that you have in less than 24 hours. Thank you and enjoy the video. Yeah, so today, uh, I actually had to shorten this webinar because like I was making, I was like, holy crap, this is going to be like four hours long. Like, <laughs> like it was originally going to be called exit en entries, exits, risk and targets. And I had to cut off the second half because like, it's going to, it's going to be a, a long webinar. So anyway, I, I figured it would be a good time to go over entries and exits and go over like kind of, it's kind of rudimentary, but I don't know, it might, hopefully it's a little less confusing for the people who aren't, you know, who are still hesitating at putting entries and exits places. And I feel like a whole lot of people are going to show up today. So wanted to go over something universal. Uh, so far, we got like 60, 70, but it, I expect it to increase. Everybody's always 10%. late. 10%. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, people still show up late. I just, I don't wait for people um, anymore. Yeah. I can't no, wait. It's, for it's, it's recorded anyway. So It's recorded. Anyway. Oh, Tay's reminding us. Okay. So anyway, let's get start. Let's get started. So um, we're going to go over the key traders um, and I'm going to show ones that I place trades on. Tom will show you once that he's it, that he did. If we miss any trades, just throw them in there and say, Hey, can you guys go over this one? And we'll pull up the chart and we'll kind of talk about it. Then, then like we'll go into the market sentiment, like where the market's at big caps and small caps, mostly small caps because Joe kind of handles the large cap in his webinars on Tuesday, which you guys should all go. They're really good. Uh, then I, I don't even know if I'll have time for this, but I'm hoping to get a little break from like a lecture. And I want you guys to pick a topic that we, that, you know, something, something like a weekend mentoring kind of question that like we can't quickly answer, but something that like Tom and I could, you know, go back and forth and give you a really good answer on. Uh, you guys are going to vote for that. And then, and then we'll get into entries and exits and then we'll have a Q, Q and a. So without further ado, let's go. So BRM, BMRA was a first bounce trade that I, that I had earlier in the week. And it's, I, I say this almost every webinar. If, if you're a short trader, you should be trading the first bounce. It is it, like, it's such a good it's such a good long set. It's such a good literal, just objective setup. Like even if you're a short bias trader, you can understand the first bounce. Like if you're a short bias trader, you're looking at the first, you're looking at a stock that's about to make a first bounce and you're like, okay, I have to short the pot, right? That's what you're saying as a short trader. I need to short the pot. I mean, the first bounce comes right before the short the pot. So like you can, like, you know, the bounce you're waiting for, the bounce you're waiting to short into is the first bounce. So uh, that's, I mean, if you're, if you're, if you're trying to look for another setup, you know, like you don't need borrows for it. It's a really good setup anyway. So yeah, again, it's just a little first bounce. Again, I hope to have one here every single week. That'll be my goal for, for the week. Like every single week I want to have a first bounce trade. Anyway, uh, I just want to go over the classic three. These are the three criteria for a great first bounce trade. And I say it, I've said it multiple times before, but the first bounce, um, you look, I look for a 50% retracement from the start of the move. Um, and I consider this to be the start of the move, like from around 750 where it broke out 775 here. So from like this bottom to this top, I look for about a 50% retracement. If I can couple it with a whole and half dollar, that's, you know, even better. You know, that's gravy on the cake. If I can couple it with, you know, a niche, that's even better. Like for me, these are the top three, right? And so one thing I want to bring up here, you could look at this entire move like and say, oh, maybe I can first bounce this move. This might warrant a pull down to here even for a bounce if you zoomed out maybe like on a 15 minute chart. So you like, I believe first bounces happen on larger time frames too. So like if you're a larger time frame trader, maybe your move is from like 650 to 10 and now you're looking to buy somewhere around eight or 775 and I can't, what did this chart do? Look, it even had one. I did I, look and see, this is kind of like the larger time frame first bounce. If you want to consider that, see what I'm saying? Like this is kind of, this kind of goes into what I was talking about last time when I said, I think every, you know, it's just little time frames inside big time frames. Like this would be, in my opinion, the big, the bigger time frame first bounce. And this is like the, the one minute one for, for, for this move. So that's kind of um, right there. 
I got a question. What is my time frame for a spouse? Like I, I just went over that. Like I normally do the first one minute, but I think it like it, it appears on every time frame. Uh, first spouse orders are always fantasy orders, right? Yes. Aha moments, kind of. No, the like like how do you, like how did you get yourself through the break even the slightly green moment? Because like for me that was a resistance wall. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I was there for like. Man, geez, like a few months, I, I was like green, green and red and then, and then down, you know, half a count gone, you know, I kind of dig myself, you know, out of that hole and then, you know, went back, right back, you know, again. And so I think the moment I realized the trading is more systematic, like I track my stats and everything, right? And I kind of focus more on those, uh, you know, risk and reward kind of trade. It makes me, you know, better as a, you know, before I was calculating only like on one trade, right? After that, I realized, I mean, you know, I want to see the outcome of hundred trades or like thousand trades. And that's, you know, put me into a better, you know, picture. So, you know, right after when I re realizing that and, you know, I just keep focusing, you know, on, on those stats, it's, it's more like, you know, all right. Let, let me just track this, you know, particular setup, right? You know, if I do it hundred times, how many times I'm going to get it wrong? What is my average, you know, uh, winners or uh, like my average losers? And so, you know, after that, it became more like, you know, robotic. I don't know how to say it, but it's better that way. Because, you know, at the end of the day, you, you want to be profitable, right? You just don't want to, you know work yourself every day and, you know, not getting paid. I mean, basically I was just sitting like for a few months, you know, my account is still the same, maybe, you know, a little bit less or, you know, maybe like half gone. It's like really totally waste of time for me. And after realizing that, you know, it, it, you know, it helps a lot. And, and I think the moment when I accept the fact that I know shit about trading, you know, it works even better. I mean, I just put my stops and, put my covers and that's it very systematic yeah and you, you just go full robot mode so a few questions got missed on dm right if you don't so that list is your criteria for entry location yes how many shares are you putting in on a trade that nets 50 cents range i'm guessing how many folks yeah. are looking for home runs because i feel like 20 or 30 cents isn't big enough move to take it honestly doesn't matter like it, it it's honestly I, I, a first bounce, I'll take, I'll take a first bounce that's like $2 a share or that's $50 a share. It all, it all, the range almost doesn't matter. So like, it, it's more of, I want to get up to about that, you know, from the top to where the bounce is. Again, I want it to bounce about 50% of the way on the first bounce. Like I want it 50% down and then like, I almost want a 50% up, you know, ideally more because on first bounces, I like to see them break high day eventually anyway. But you know, I, sh I sell some in anticipation of a lower high and then sell some later. I don't, I don't take sense into the, into account really on the first bounce trade. I, you know, like, I mean the shares, I just, I mean, it all depends on the range. I, I use less shares on the $50 trade than I do on the $2 trade, but you, you know, like I, I don't really, I don't really look at it as a, it's more of per, almost like percentage range like retracement range. yeah it's i think it all depends on your account size i mean yeah. if you're using i mean twenty thousand shares yes 50 cents as your home runs right yeah. but if for someone is using like you know 100 shares right that's probably maybe scalp Twenty thousand shares scalp now we're getting into guy genteel territory <laughs> uh Vic, this is a good question it's one of my favorite trading questions actually ever how do you differ differentiate between low volume versus illiquid it's a very important distinction Normally they go together, which is why people confuse the two. But a low a low volume stock could be very 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 liquid, and uh, and an illiquid stock could have a whole lot of volume. Think about dries. Dries when it went from five to a hundred, dries had very 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 high volume. It was the most illiquid ticker there was. I, I mean the spread was literally like you can tell a stock's illiquid normally by the spread, but you can also see how like illiquid is basically you know how small. How do I say this? Um, Maybe the range. A small amount of capital, a small amount of shares can move an illiquid stock, but uh, not a liquid stock. You know, uh, an example of a stock that's really liquid, but low volume. Think about GE in pre-market. Now, GE in pre-market, General Electric, it's like, I don't know, $8 a share or something or something like that. Think about pre-market at the start of the day, right? At the start of the day, like right at the open, like, it is very, 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 very liquid, even if no shares are trading. 
It is low volume, but there's no way if you had 20,000 bucks and you wanted to buy everything you could of GE, you wouldn't even move it 10 cents because it's very liquid. There's a whole lot of shares there, even if they're not trading. Now, you know, volume is just an indicator of how much it's trading. But just because something is trading high volume, that's where it's dangerous. When, when stocks are trading high volume and then they say, oh, look at, look at how much it's trading. It's very liquid. No, it's not. If a stock is trading high volume, it can still be insanely illiquid. Like if you buy a thousand shares, you could move it, right? That's yeah. an illiquid stock. It's, it's one of my favorite. It's important for, for newer traders to know that because newer traders will look at a stock like, I don't know, BLPH. It might be trading 30 million shares on the day and it, and, and, and there's, you know, and it's super illiquid and it's a very risky stock. I illiquid is thin is a uh, synonymous with illiquid. Well, thanks guys. Thanks guys. Right on. All right. See you. Talk. Right. Thanks for Good coming. Good stuff, guys. bro. Right on. Yeah. Later, bro. Later. later guys. Later everybody. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.